Hello, Brandon, the Algebra Guy here. Today I want to talk to you about adding integers in real life problems called applications. So you'll be able to solve a problem like this we see here. Um, a football team took possession of the football on their 42 yard line. In the next three plays, they lost six yards, gained four yards, then lost eight yards. So the question would be on what yard line was the ball at the end of those three plays? So I want to show you how you can answer this, these problems and show you what steps you want to go through when answering these types of problems. So let's get to it. Today we're asking these questions. What are the steps to solving real world application problems involving integers? And how do I apply those steps in an application problem? So here's the plan that you want to employ when solving problems in the application. One, determine what we're looking for. That's always a good start. Sometimes you can get started assuming that they're going to ask you about something or just um, assuming that you know what they're looking for, but make sure you know what they're asking for. Number two, write a phrase that gives the information to find it. So write out a phrase that's pretty much summarizing what they're looking for so it becomes easy um, to see what they want uh, or, or the information you were given. Next, translate that phrase into math notation so that we can begin working on our problem. Simplify to get the answer. And don't forget this last step. Let's reword it in such a way as to know that we did answer the question. I'm going to leave this up here as we solve our first problem. And what I want to do um, is really just go through a few of these problems and we'll close it up. But to give you a good practice of how you can apply these steps when doing application problems involving integers. So let's look at this one. The temperature in Buffalo, New York one morning started at 7 degrees below zero Fahrenheit. By noon, it warmed up to 12 degrees. What was the temperature at noon? So let's go through those steps again and answer this question. What um, We first determine what are we looking for. Well, that's simple. We're asked to find the temperature at noon. And write out a phrase that gives the information to find it. So let's write out some phrase. Uh, let's summarize really what they're saying. The temperature warmed up to 12 degrees um, from 7 degrees below zero. And that's pretty much what they're saying. Um, the temperature one morning started at 7 degrees below zero. By noon, it warmed up to 12 degrees. Um, rewriting it so that it's in math notation would look like this. It started at negative 7, 7 below, and it added 12. And if we were to solve it, it'll simplify to be 5. Now, 5 doesn't mean anything. Because we're talking about an application problem, we want to make sure that we're answering it in an application or real life. Sometimes students stop here because we're so used to math just being about numbers that we forget to actually apply it in some um, way by adding the units. So what we really want to say here is that uh, the temperature at noon was 5 degrees Fahrenheit. This would give us the best idea um, of what they're looking for. Let me make sure... This is showed up here. There you go. So I want to make sure we can see that. So the temperature at noon was 5 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, next problem. The temperature in Chicago, it's 5 a.m., was 10 degrees below zero Celsius. Six hours later, it warmed up to 14 degrees Celsius. What is the temperature at 11 a.m.? So we want to work this one. I'm going to do this one by hand. I'll use blue, uh, red. We haven't used red yet. So uh, let's. What are we determine what we're looking for? What is the temperature at 11 11 a.m.? There is what we're looking for right here. I'm just going to underline it. So let's not forget that. What is the temperature at 11 o'clock a.m.? Uh, what write a phrase that gives the information to find it. So let's think about the information they gave us. Um, temperature in Chicago. At 5 a.m. was 10 degrees below, so we started at 10 degrees below. So started 10 degrees below zero. Six hours later, it wound up to 14 degrees. Then went up to 14 degrees. All right, so I know that's sloppy writing. I really don't write like that in real life. 
but it can be tough sometimes translating. So hopefully you get that at least from my reading it. Started at 10 degrees below zero, then went up to 14 degrees is what it says. Translate the phrase into math notation. So how can I translate? Well, we started at negative 10. We started at negative 10. And then we went up. To 14. So if we're going up, that means we're increasing going to the right on the number line. So we need to add 14 because we went up some the temperatures. Now we're going to simplify. What is negative 10 plus 14? Well, we know when adding integers, we're going to take the biggest integer sign, which is a plus. So that's going to be a positive 4 in this case because it's 14 minus 10. And then write the center sentence, a, a sentence to answer the question. What is the temperature? So the temperature is 4 degrees, what does it say, Celsius at 11 a.m. There you go. That's how you write a beautiful answer. And your, te your math teacher will love it because you're not just simply saying four. Four what? Four dimes, four minutes, four seconds. No, four degrees Celsius at 11 o'clock a.m. All right, let's try another one. Let's erase that. And look at this person swimming. How cool is that? Hopefully it don't bother you, buddy. All right, a scuba diver was swimming 16 feet below the surface and then dove down another 17 feet. What's her new depth? What's her new depth? Um, see if you can work this one by yourself. I will set it up and see if you can go through those steps. Um, what are we looking for? What the new depth? So we're looking for the new depth. Write a phrase that gives information to find it. All right, the scuba diver was swimming at 16 feet below. So I'm going to say start it at 16 feet below. Um, then dove down another feet, uh, 17 feet. Then I'm just a, a paraphrasing. Then went down further. Um, 17 feet. All right, we need some kind of math translation for this. I'm going to look at it this way. Started at 16 feet below. So what kind of 16 would that be if we're starting below, 16 feet below the surface? Well, if we had some water, this is water right here. I know that's looking like some good, there's some waves. So if we had some water, this would be zero, right? Zero feet. Now this diver right here is below the surface at 16 feet. So we're going to 16 feet below. Well, below is going to be a minus 16 because it's below zero. And then what happened? The diver went down further, another 17 feet. So we're going to say it went down another 17 feet. And we know that we a negative, take away another negative or subtract more um, values is going to keep that um, to be negative. So this is going to be a negative. Let's see, 16 plus 17 is 33. So we went down um, 30. We simplified it. Now we're going to answer the question. So this is showing that what's her new depth? Her new depth is 33 feet below zero. And yes, you could also say this is zero. You could have also said negative 33 feet. I believe either one of those would be okay, um, depending on um, your assessment and what your teacher is looking for. A football team took possession of the football on the 42-yard line. In the next three plays, they lost six yards, gained four yards, and then lost eight yards. On what yard line was the ball at the end of these three plays? So we're going to work this like we did before. Um, and this probably closes it up for us as practice. So first of all, we're going to talk about what we're looking for. And it's what yard line was the ball on at the end of those three things that happened. So uh, what three things? We started at 42, started at 42, lost six, gained four. So that's how we can summarize what's going on here. Let's, let's put this in math language. It's 42 minus 6 plus 4 minus 8. Well, when you do the math there, 42 minus 6 gives us 36. 36 plus 4 is 30, um, 40. I'm sorry, 40. And then 40 minus 8 is 32. So that's how we get our 32. And lastly, we want to write a sentence to answer the question. At the end of three plays, the ball is on the 32-yard line. 
Thank you very much. That's how you slam dunk your answer to make sure you got it right. Most students stop here, but no, you're different. You're going to make sure you get it absolutely right and answer it in the complete sentence because you went back to the question. So good for you. So did we accomplish our goal? You better be sure we did. How can the addition of integers be modeled using counters? We showed that um, um, with the counters we had and how can express how can we express integers simplified? This is not my questions. So my question should be, I'm gonna have to go back now. These are my um, older questions. So I wanna go back to my original slide just to make sure I answered those questions. What steps? Are we solving in real world application? Uh, what are the steps of solving real world application problems involving integers? And how do I apply those steps in an application problem? So those are the two answers, questions we asked in the beginning. Did we answer them? We talked about those steps. So it was five steps and we applied them in three different problems. So we answered both of those questions. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Brandon Clayton. And until next time, uh, to the next lesson, I'll see you later.